Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the 74th annual Pacific Northwest Scottish Highland Games and Clan Gathering. This year, because of the COVID virus, will be virtual, but we want to bring you some of the excitement of the games so you'll remember us for next year. And don't forget that your annual dues and your contributions this year pay for next year's games. So please help us out in that manner. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, all of the athletes, the drummers, the pipers, the dancers, the bands, every one of us, we can all together feel our blood boil when those mass bands come on the field and we want you there. Next year, the last weekend in July, the 75th annual Pacific Northwest Scottish Highland Games and Clan Gathering. We'll see you there. Say hello to the crowd. <laughs> Ashley, 
you sure you want her? You want to take you take the baby? You want to take the baby? Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Take care of your cousin. And also, this Arista was really wonderful because you could go to the garden and you could carry home your vegetables. So is anybody hungry for some beets? Some wilted beets? <laughs> It'll be fine later. And the other thing that's really great about an Arista is that you could conceal a weapon for your protection. And that is the reason. And I want to say to you, kum du la bin lat heinza which means don't mess with me. <laughs> Loosely. So I want to know, you having a great time at the games this year? I hope so, yeah. And one of the reasons that I believe you're having a great time at the games is because this time of the year is timed with a Celtic festival. It's timed at the Celtic festival of Lunasa. So Lunasa celebrated the Earth's first first harvest, the earth's earth harvest, and that was either corn or wheat or barley. So um, this celebration was to not only celebrate that it was, but to be grateful for the abundance in our lives, right? You know, it's one, something that doesn't happen sometimes now, but to be grateful. So this was a celebration to celebrate with gratitude. In Scotland, just so you know, We've always celebrated the first harvest, the best beer and ale, and the best single malt whiskey in the world, scotch. So later, perhaps tip back a few to the festivals in your life, tip back a few to the goddesses that are in your life now and then, and to celebrate with gratitude and joy for Earth's abundance. So salam jaba. Salam jaba. Okay, <laughs> this should be interesting the rest of the time. Okay, wait, let's just do this. <laughs> okay, oh. So this Festival of Lunasa, where was I? So this Festival of Lunasa has at its heart a great and an incredible strong woman um, who was the last queen of Fear Blug. And she became a goddess later. So I'm referring to a woman named Talitu. Want to say that? Talitu. Talitu. So Talitu was um, an amazing, amazing woman. She had the strength of mother love and clan love fiercely in her heart. So Talitu, she and she alone cleared large stands of agricultural fields so that her family could survive. But what happened is that she died from this endeavor. And on her deathbed, she asked her clan to celebrate with joy and gratitude the abundances of the harvest. And it was celebrations like you're at today, because this is timed with Lunasa. So the story of Lunasa is that Lunasa was named for the Celtic sun god Lu, but really it's a celebration of his mother, Taliatu. Go figure. But it is. So it's a celebration of Taliatu when she did this great deed and then died. So the celebration back then was called the Talitin Games because it was named after her. So the games included much of what you see here today. Um, there's drink, there's dance. There's ceremonies, there's athletic contests, there's um, um, religious ceremonies, there's also, there was also the sacrifice of a bull. So take away the sacrifice of a bull, which you're not gonna find here this weekend, and you have much the same that happened for thousands of years with Lunasa. So Lunasa that I spoke about and Talia II that I spoke about are a part of a Celtic um, spiritual path that was practiced for literally thousands of years. So this, the Celtic spiritual path is deeply tied to nature and deeply tied to the cycles of the earth, the cycles of our body, the cycles of the year. And the Celtic spiritual path says that 
spirituality lives not only inside of you, but outside of you, and that we're intimately related to everything that there is. The stars, the planets, the, the plants, the animals, the crawlers, the flyers, the gods, the goddesses, the humans, the quirks, things that we don't know, we're intimately related to. We're all connected like a 3D integrated puzzle. We're all together. And as powerful as the gods were in this system, goddesses were much more powerful. Why is that? Because the people saw that life in themselves and in the plants and the animals were feminine. And they also saw the relationship between the goddesses and the women. And so they respected the women in their clans. Women held great political power. They trained warriors and they led them into battle. They were healers, they were prophets, they were priestesses. Every role that you can think of, a woman was. So I want you to think about that in terms of today. That we can embrace, is it buzzing to you? I'm hearing buzzing. Okay. You know, I don't know what it is. It is, it's this one spot. So, I won't stand it up. So if you think about it today, we don't have the same situation as much as they used to then, and maybe we can bring that back in tension. I, want, I also want to mention to you that in Celtic way of life, if a woman led a spectacular life, she could be elevated to the status of a goddess, either during her life or at her death, much like happens in the Catholic Church with saints. So was Talia II that I spoke about, was Talia II, was she a mortal queen, or was she a goddess, or was she both? You know, stories about the goddesses and history were spoken in history, so, you know, like the line gets a little bit blurred about whether it was a historical figure or a goddess, or what they did and what they didn't do, and things get bigger, fish get bigger. But we do know that whether she was a woman, a fierce woman, or a fierce goddess, or both, their pluck and intelligence can inspire us now as it has for millennia. So as they speak about all these goddesses, please, afterwards, come up to the centers of fire and water and earth. And we had wind before because we had the fan going and we might turn it on again. So um, come up and connect with the goddess, all of them if you want to, or just to see how beautiful this stuff is out here, and to ask questions. So off we go on our goddess journey. So the first goddess I'm going to speak about is a saucy, um, amazing, enchantress goddess. And her sacred days are right now. They were yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You can connect to her with the life-giving light of the sun or the inspiration-giving light of the moon. She is also a goddess of love and, some say, the queen of the fae. So it was believed that Anya's, um, oh, did I say her name? I didn't. Sorry, sorry, Anya. Her name is Anya. So if you want to say that too, Anya, we connect to Anya that way. So it's believed that Anya's life-giving spark traveled through our body, in our blood. So it's also believed that if you did bloodletting on her sacred holy days of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, that the spark would run out of your body and you would die. So I want to remind you, in case you were thinking about doing it, no bloodletting today. Or maybe just modern day giving blood until after August 1st. It's just a couple of days. So um, Anya, as the goddess of creative inspiration, gave gifts of brilliance. But these gifts of brilliance came with a price. Madness. So. Um, her inspiration could somehow push them over the edge into feelings of being connected to the moonlight and connected to your heart, and connected to what you wanted to say, connected to everything so that you could spill out 
the beauty in your heart for others. So here begins a story weaving together creative brilliance, enchantment, love, and madness. One night in the long ago, there was a poet who was describing the beauty of Anya's favorite tree. At the finish of one particular verse, a woman came walking towards him and, and re recessed back into the willow tree. And the wind blew, and it blew like this, and the body was with the branches, with the leaves. Hmm, he thought to himself. Hmm. The poet was struck by her beauty in the moonlight. So the poet watched this woman sway and bend, and sway and bend, and sway and bend so, mu so much that, that he was not sure. What, was it a tree? Was it a woman? What, what was it? Of course, little did the poet know that it was not a tree. It was not a woman. It was the goddess Anya, the queen of the fae. She and the fairy realm had been sitting in the branches of the tree listening to her, the, the poet's um, creations. And in fact, multitudes of fairies were listening to the poet. But at one, poem, one, one point, the poet was talking, 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 then he stopped. The poet stopped creating, stopped praising the beauty of the tree, praising nature. So all the fairies, in the trees, we're waiting, we're begging, please, poet, please, please give me more, please give me more. But he thought it was the wind in the trees and in the leaves. So the fairies went to Anya and said, please, Anya, please, please, here's a human who finally understands the beauty of nature, the beauty of the tree, the beauty of the earth. And because she knew this was true, she walked out of the trees and came towards the poet. In the moonlight again, Anya glowed with the light of a different world. The poet asked her name and she said, I am the spirit of your poems. I am the spirit of the earth. I am the spirit of your dreams. And as such, I ask you, please, please continue to create. All the fairies and all the beings in the forest are listening to you. Please. So the poet paused and thought about it. And he said, I, I have been praising the beauty of the earth all of my life since I was a little one. But right now I'm in need of, I don't know, inspiration. So Anya came close to the poet and she said, ah, dear poet. I can offer you what you need. I can offer you the gift of inspiration, but it comes with a price. It comes with the price of madness. But therein you will find the inspiration that you seek. So the poet thought about Anya's offer, and after thinking about it, he said, yes, Lady Anya, yes, I accept your offer. I understand what you're saying, but I want to continue to praise the beauty of nature. And I also accept the responsibility for the danger that you warned me of. So Anya touched the poet's brow with her hand, and touched the poet's cheek with her hand, and touched the poet's lips with hers, and he was instantly transformed, transformed in the shimmer of the moonlight, the poet was open to inspir inspiration again and, and praising the beauty of the moon and the moonlight and the, and the fragrance in the air and the fireflies and everything that danced in the moonlight. The realm of the Fae were greatly pleased, of course, and more importantly, so is the goddess Anya. When the poet finished with the creation process, they made love underneath the branches of the willow tree in the silver moonlight, and they became one. So Anya,
can show us the strength that our creativity can bring to us every place in our life. And not to be afraid of the, ma the brilliance and the madness in the moonlight, because it's also love. Have you felt that way when we are in love? Sometimes it's madness. Yeah. So look to Anya to inspire your creative endeavors in whatever form that takes, and to embrace love in every part of your life to banish fear. So the next story I'm gonna talk, tell you about is about an amazing woman, amazing woman. I, you know what, I, actually I'm gonna say this too. When you look up here, doesn't it look like, pinpricks look like the stars? I feel like it does. When I came in here um, early, yesterday and I looked up and it's like oh my gosh we're underneath the constellations this is a great place to be in telling these stories okay so back to my story sorry I digress <laughs> so the next story is about an amazing woman and uh, her name is Triduana and even though it's a small story I love telling it because she is a great example so she is a great example of a woman who led such an amazing existence that she was elevated to the status of a goddess and also elevated to the status of a saint for the very same reasons. So <clears throat> here goes the story. So Triduana was a beautiful and a strong and a fierce Celt woman who was being harassed by a picked king. And rather than to submit to his unwanted unwanted advances, she plucked out her eyes <laughs> and she presented them to the king to ruin her own beauty. <laughs> what did we do? do? <laughs> now some would say that this is a bit extreme and especially if there's four eyeballs. I don't know. <laughs> some would say that's a bit extreme but it showed the people that she would not allow herself to be abused. You know what I'm saying? Don't mess with me. Cum laude, you know, don't mess with me. So the strength of tr Triduana can assist us to reach down deep to stop abuse in our life and also to tell us that we're strong enough to conquer anything in our lives. And we can leave those eyeballs up there till later. Okay, so the next goddess I want to speak about, I speak about every year, and I love her, and so does, so do, like, really a huge amount. I don't want to say a silly number. Everyone loves this goddess. This goddess is Bridget. Yeah. So um, Bridget is a part of the Tuatha Dé Danu, the ancient gods and goddesses, and she's been a beloved Celtic triple goddess for literally thousands of years. Think about um, the evolution of religions, how long, but she is literally thousands of years. So Bridget was one of the parts of the land of the warring Celtic tribes, and they warred with each other. It was one of the things that they could use to bring them together was one of those things that they agreed upon was Bridget. Now, Bridget is known by many different names in many different lands, including Bridget, Brigid, Brigitte, Brid, Bridiana, Bride, Bridey, and my favorite is Brija. Oh, I like that one. That sounds nice, doesn't it? And many, many others that I really can't pronounce. So, um, Bridget's main titles are the goddess of healing, inspiration, and um, smithcraft, but she's so much more. So some of those areas are creative inspiration, new beginnings of birth, healing using water, poetry, divination, home and happiness, prophecy and purification by fire, and so on and so on. She is one of the main goddesses of Druidry, in fact, the main goddess of Druidry. And she was a protectress of strength of the people and the land. You see, she was like their North Star. She was their guiding light for thousands and thousands of years. So to give you an idea how she came to this reality, how she came to this world, I'm going to tell you the story of her birth that was ignited by fire and praised by water. 
a long time ago, at the first crack of a pink dawn, the goddess Bridget slipped into the world and into the arms of nine swaying and crooning sisters who formed a great circle around her. And a magic well gurgled its joy. So up rose a column from the goddess Bridget's head that reached the very heavens and con connected the heavens to the earth, the above to the below. And then goddess Re the goddess Bridget reached up her hands and she grabbed the fire and she threw it to the ground. And there it let danced and it leapt and it danced and it leapt. And yeah. then the goddess took great stones. <gasps> goddesses start to sway and crew even more, even more, and the magic well at this point is starting to tremble. She reached in her hands and she pick, pick, picked up a leaping tongue of flame and there it burned on her hands and she swallowed it and it went straight to her heart. So there stood the goddess fire crowning her head, fire leaping from her heart, fire dancing from her hands. The goddess Bridget was born. Welcome, Bridget. I always can feel her really well when I tell that story because it ignites her feelings right here with us. So obviously, Bridget is connected with fire. Her flame, the element of fire, occurs in many different ways in um, her connection with Bridget. So there's the outer fire, the hearth, which of course is the, symbolizes the home, and the inner fire of life that burns away disease and heals us and helps us move forward in our life. And then there's the outer fire of the forge that creates metalworks and creative arts and alchemy. And then there is the inner fire of the head, which sparks creativity, wisdom, and transformation. You know, transformation through sitting in the fire of our true authentic self to burn away all the stuff that we no longer need in our lives. Bridget is saying to us that sometimes we need to feel the fire, to react to the fire, to be changed and charged by the fire into a lioness, into a warrior, into a goddess, so that we can walk our everyday path of life. And sometimes, fire is light in us and in the dark that shows us the way. Yeah, sometimes if we get too close to a flame, yeah, we're gonna get burned. But the courage that it took to jump into the flame and to feel the fire, that is going to change you and charge you and transform you into something stronger and more amazing. So, I want to also say that in balance, Bridget is connected to water. And these are usually in the forms of a sacred well or hot springs that bubble up from the earth because those represent wisdom and healing. So I want to tell you a story about Bridget and her sacred healing wells. So one day, Bridget was sitting on a stone by her sacred healing well. And two people approached, two lepers, and they asked her to be healed. She said to the first man, go to my sacred healing waters and heal yourself. So every place that he put the water, every place that the water touched, he became healed and whole. And then Bridget said to this man, now turn and heal your friend. And he turned and he looked at the person and he was repulsed and he, he backed away and he said, no, I, can't, I cannot do that now. The goddess Bridget does not put up with stuff. <laughs> so she said to him, there in, you do not, you are not healed. So she took away his healing and she gave him back his leprosy and she said, Come back to me with a sense of compassion, and therein you will find your healing. And then she turned to the second man, 
And she took her own cloak and she dipped it into the sacred well and she wrapped it around his shoulders. And every place that her sacred healing waters touched, he became healed and whole. And he said to her, thank you, Goddess Bridget, for my healing. And he went to the first man and he said, I forgive you. <clears throat> So, um, I also want you to know that about Bridget, that Bridget's healing wells still attract, today, thousands of people. And they're looking for these kind of, of, of healing, healing situations. I don't know, I don't know how you want to say it, healing moments. So, it still goes on today. So another side of Bridget is that Bridget is a bringer of light after many long months of winter. So she celebrated on, on February 1st at Imbo, and a thousand years ago, it was not a small thing to survive the winter. So when Bridget brings back the sun and the light, this is huge. It's survival, it's light, and the people knew that. So every year she brought back to them new beginnings and hope. The goddess Bridget has been worshipped for literally thousands of years, and then around the 5th century, there came a woman that was named Bridget, or renamed Bridget, and um, she led an exceptional life of service to others. And so when she died, she was venerated, and she was now Saint Bridget. So the evolution from the goddess to the saint linked Celtic traditions and the Christian traditions, and Bridget was one of those Bridges. So the goddess and the saint have the same name. The goddess and the saint have the same feast days. The goddess and the saint have the same legends and customs. So some suggest that there was a woman who renamed herself and took on the attributes of Bridget to attract followers to Christianity. You know, who knows, really, maybe, perhaps, it would be a good plan, and that's happened a lot. Um, but I do know that chronologically, Bridget was a goddess thousands of years before St. Bridget came to us. In the world today, there is a place called St. Bridget's Shrine, and at this shrine, there is a flame that's kept burning 24 seven. And I would ask you to honor which one? Because this land was taken over by the Christians from a land that the goddesses um, worship the goddess Bridget. I mean, that the people worship, the priestesses worship the goddess Bridget. Or maybe the other goddesses worship the goddess Bridget too, but who knows. So, um, so this land at, um, Saint, uh, at Kildare, at St. Bridget's Shrine, has a big tradition with um, Bridget. So I want to ask you, do you think that maybe that they were worshiping the goddess? Or was it the woman? Or was it the saint with the sacred flames? You know, in my opinion, it's all three. Because sometimes a form will appear and it needs to be look this way for a thousand years and then it needs to look this way for another thousand years. And it puts those forms together. So I think it is in relationship to all three. So I say look to Bridget, regardless of her form, for strength to burn away those things that are no longer necessary in your life so that you can become all that you are meant to be. So on to our next goddess, whose name is Skathach. Can you say that? Isn't that wonderful? Skathach. I love it. So she was afraid of nothing, and in fact, her name means she who strikes fear in the eyes of others. So she, like, was, you know, fierce woman. So Skathach. So Skithach, one of the things that she did was accompany souls who were slain in the battlefield to on their soul journey. So if they led a good life, she would accompany them on their soul journey called, um, uh, I'm sorry, one second here, yeah. Imrama Na'anim, their soul journey, to Tirnanug, which is the other world. But if she found a soul who had not lived such a great life, she took them to an other island in the other world where she would deposit them on an island and they would learn what they had done wrong. And then they paid their debts, which is not such a bad 
feel either to learn what you're doing not so good. So Skatach, so Skatach, Warriors School was on the Isle of Sky in the Hebrides. There she taught the deadly use of weapons and in balance the art of making love. And she also taught healing and prophecy. The greatest warriors of the time came to her school. And there are so many stories about Skatach and her training school and her daughters and her sister who all battled against Skatach. Also, as a protectress of the land, her great battle shield was said to guard the land of the living from the land of the dead. And one night a year, she would drop her shield so that the dead could walk amongst the living and the living could honor the dead. Death and life in a healthy relationship, not in fear. <coughs> So, some believe that Skathach was a mortal woman. She was a definitely an important leader and a warrior. So remember in Celtic tribes and in Celtic lands, when women, women trained warriors and led them into battle. And remember also that if they led an exemplary life, they could be elevated to the status of a goddess. So it was that Skathach was elevated to the status of a goddess by the Tuatha de Danu. But whether she was a mortal woman or a goddess or both, it doesn't really matter. She was an inspiration. So look to Skathach. Say Skathach. And it's really interesting. You say it and you just really sit in the last part of it. It, it kind of resonates with your whole body. So look to Skathach for strength to conquer your fears so that you can follow your heart to your destiny. So the last story I'm going to tell is about an amazing goddess who was at the beginning before all these goddesses I spoke about. And she was there because she birthed all life into this reality, including them. And her name is Danu. Danu. So she birthed everything in this universe out of chaos, you see. And so, um, need to find my pocket here. Just one moment, please, everybody. <laughs> when you have this much clothes, how do they wear this much clothes? I mean, seriously, it's just really a lot of clothes to have on here. Got it. Okay. So she birthed everything in this universe out of chaos, which of course includes birthing the, the stars and the planets and the earth and the plants and the animals and the crawlers and the grass and everything that you can think of, she birthed into this universe. So here is a story about Danu, the goddess mother Danu. Once, long ago, before the stars shined, before the earth breathed, and before people were a twinkle in the eye of creation, there was a divine mother named Danu for some reason that we do not understand because we are mere mortals, she decided to dream and to create and manifest a reality. Being the source of inspiration and wisdom, she knew she needed to be birth and balance. So she birthed life and death, chaos and peace, women and men, goddesses and goddess, everything in balance. Here she created a green, blue earth and a silver moon. She created fire and water. She created birds and plants. She created women and imbalanced men and goddesses and imbalanced goddesses. And so on and so on. Everything was good. She birthed all things on earth. Now we go again. Where is it? She birthed all things on earth from her mighty oak tree. Her mighty oak tree that reached from its roots in the other world to its branches in the constellation Cygnus and from acorns that dropped off her mighty oak tree. Everything she birthed grew and grew like a forest, a forest of plants, a forest of animals, a forest of birds, a forest of 
gods, forest of goddesses, a forest of men, a forest of women. Everything birthed from her mighty old tree and her little acorns. To the people she created on earth, she said, respect and honor the earth as the earth will respect and honor you. Learn lessons of wisdom from the mountains, from the waters, from the winds, from each other. The people loved her dearly and they followed her in guidance. And in fact, her people and the gods and the goddesses were called the Tuwata De Danu, which I have mentioned before, which means the folk of the goddess Danu. But one day, as happens in life, there came a people that did not respect the earth and did not respect Danu. And the crops began to fail and the animals began to die. And the fruits of the trees no longer shared their fruits and the, and the seasons no longer flowed from each other. Everything was out of balance. So Danu warned these people by thunder and lightning that they were misusing our sacred earth. Remember to honor the earth. Remember to honor the earth that she is one of my living, breathing creations and she is a sister to you. She is a sister to you in the sacred web of life. Remember that as abundant as the earth can be, the earth can also bring you death. So people saw that life was out of balance and that they were frightened and they cried out in fear and they asked her for forgiveness. And they knew that they had broken their part of the promise. So the people went to a special place where they knew that Daniel was in the water, in the trees, and in the salmon. And they asked for forgiveness. And they asked for the actions to heal the earth. So uh, Danu answered, my children of earth, remember you are but one of my creations. And as one of you live and die, so does the other. In time, in time, people changed their actions and at long last, the skies cleared and the oceans became as before and the crops began to share their, their gifts with them and the animals began to bread and the sister moon waxed and waned. Danu helped the people to remember, to remember, to honor the earth and care for her and balance was restored, and abundance returned. So Danu's voice is the voice of wisdom, intelligence, and creation. She's also the voice of compassion and forgiveness, but she's also the firm voice of a parent who says, take care of your responsibilities. And she reminds us what our part of the web of life is. She can share new beginnings with us all if we honor that sacred web of life. So let the wisdom of Danu guide you to manifest new actions in your life to heal yourself and your community and your world so you can build a reality of beauty. So these women and these goddess, goddesses that I've spoken of are blazing stars that guided Celtic people. And I believe they can do that now for us if we look deep into their message. Sometimes in history, the line gets a little blurred between an historical figure and a goddess. And what difference does it make? The message is there. Remarkable Celtic women were elevated to the status of a goddess. Remarkable Celtic women were elevated to the status of a saint. And sometimes they were the same so that transitions can happen between spiritual paths. But whether intense mortal woman, impassioned Scottish saint, or fierce Scottish goddess, or all three, I believe that their pluck and their intelligence can inspire us now to do great works in our lives. You see, I believe that we all have the strength in us. The goddess strengthen us, the saints strengthen us, the us strengthen us to do great works in our life. We, we do, all of us do. So may you gather strength from the stories that precede you. 
and may you look to yourself and use your own strength now to use your gifts and bring them to the world to share yourself with the world. And then may you inspire those that come after you. So I'm going to end with a Gaelic blessing. And after the blessing, please feel free to come out to the centers of fire and water and earth. And no wind. There's just a little wind right now. And then ask questions. So may the blessing of light be on you, light from within and light from without. And may the blessed sunlight shine on you like a great peak fire. So this stranger and friend alike come and be warmed by you. And may, and may you shot the light shine out of the two eyes of you like two candles set in a window, bidding the wanderer, come in, come in out of the storm. And may the blessing of rain be on you and wash your fears uh, fair and clean, leaving a shining pool where the blue is reflected of heaven and sometimes a star. My blessings to you all. Thank you for being here. Goddesses that are in our life now as they were before.